Well, hello here, YouTubers. Joe Kersey here uh, on uh, December 22nd, 2013, the fourth Sunday of Advent. <coughs> and uh, it's about 14 plus 5. It's 19. It's 1900 Zulu time. Now, um, we've had a fair amount of rain here the last two days, two and a half days actually, uh, but quite heavy last night, particularly around midnight, just after it turned midnight. And you see this little pump house station over here at the nursery, and you see where the water level is in relation to it. Well, the water was up to just the very, very bottom of it. And, um, uh, and we were getting... Uh, uh, significant sort of seepage up here on our base of our little creek bank here you know I do this I do this a bit fast here I'm becoming impatient but uh, it's now considerably better it's down now uh, you know so uh, that's uh, we got off we got off easy this time. Uh, the water's only been up here actually in a true flood situation uh, three times, three times in the 30, uh, let's see, now 32 years we've lived out here. And uh, one time it got up to, uh, it was about six inches deep at the foot of, well, it was about six inches deep where that little ash tree is right now, which wasn't there at the time. That this was all back in the 80s, and uh, uh, now our deer are coming back. Uh, we have five females and a male roaming around. Hi, deer. I don't know. These may be two new ones here, other than the group of. Oh no, here, here are the rest of them are coming. Here they go. Here they are. Yeah. Well, these five have been pretty much staying together here now that uh, the hunting season seems to have died down and is pretty much over with. Although, I guess there may be some actual muzzle loading stuff going on here next week or week after next. Uh, but uh, they had a. a a male with them here earlier. Um, he was uh, clearly, well, he was he was three years old. Now he, you know, I, I may have mentioned we had we had three males running around here this fall competing for various females, and uh, uh, there was a youngster with just you know he just he just had his he just had his his initial set of horns, so he wasn't going to get any. And uh, uh, then you have had the male I saw today, and then there was a considerably older male with a you know a huge rack. And uh, I haven't seen him since sort of just just at the start of hunting season. I imagine I imagine he may have been shot. Uh, well, or taken with a bow because uh, gun season wasn't until a little later in the, uh, you know, a little later on. Uh, well, it was last week in November, basically, where it crosses into December. And I haven't seen him since then, so maybe he got killed during gun season but, or hit by a car or something. But, uh, but, uh you know, these. These guys tend to lay low during hunting season. You don't you don't see them very often. And uh, of course, with the nice weather today here, it's 54 degrees. I'm out here in my shorts and just wearing my hoodie. And uh, so uh, there we are. Well, let's uh, let's talk a bit. Uh, another dose of sad news at church today. 
one of the members of our vestry uh, who is, uh, excuse me a minute. Practicalities. I tend to forget to do that. One of the members of our vestry who's, uh, well, he's, he's in his early 80s. Um, he had an aortic valve replacement on Friday. And uh, apparently the initial situation was that everything went fine. In fact, uh, Saturday afternoon, he, his family was visiting. I guess he had been moved out of the ICU, you know, into the step-down unit. You know, he wasn't on the ventilator or anything. He was awake and talking. And I don't know. They may have even yanked, yanked his chest tubes. Uh, if, if he even needed a chest tube, sometimes they try to avoid sticking those things in. They try to not bugger up the plural spaces like they used to routinely which although in this case might have actually might have helped because they would might have had some early indication of what was going on uh, because of the blood that would be coming out of those other chest tubes but he's awake and talking his family was in there his grandkids were in there and uh, they'd had about a two-hour visit and uh, then along about four o'clock in the afternoon, he sort of grabs his side and says, you better call for the nurse. And then by the time the various people came in to deal with him, he, he was essentially dead. <clears throat> but of course they pounded on him a bit and uh, they, got, they got some cardiac rhythm back and whipped him down to the OR and reopened him and I guess well, it's hard to tell what happened. Either you now he's either he either had a massive aortic dissection or a massive valvular dislodgement. Uh, in any case, there was he. In any case, he bled out. You know, uh, so he must have had some sort of. That, that makes sense. Well, you never see. You can't. You, you, you and of course you don't dare question people for details. So. In any case, um, uh, Charles called me about this last night around 8 o'clock. And then uh, this morning, uh, he announced that uh, at 10.15, just before the 10.30 service, that uh, he was going to go down to the hospital while they basically turned this man's ventilator off. Um, apparently, uh, he had uh, you know, severe brain damage during the episode, the, during, during the period where he didn't have any circulation. Um, so, we'll be funeralizing here later this week, I imagine probably Friday. I don't know, it could be even Monday or Tuesday of next, of the week after next. So, um, some of these folks, you know, well, hell, you know, once they're once they're burned up, you, you know, there's no rush, is there? So, well, I guess there's no rush anyway. You just keep them in the freezer. You know, if they're not burned up, you just keep keep them in the freezer. Well, that said, this guy, I saw this guy last Sunday, and. Uh, at the eight o'clock service, and he always, you know, we always shook hands. And he was always very gracious, and he looked he looked relatively fine. I mean, you know, he looked like he was eighty-two years old, but he didn't look particularly gray or having trouble breathing or anything. Although I guess uh, you get talking to people, they said that a couple of weeks prior to that, he had had trouble breathing and. Had to go to the dock about something. So maybe that maybe that was him going into failure. I don't know. 
I might hear more later. Meanwhile, the season of the falls has started. So we heard about a couple of three elderly women that had essentially fallen down their basement steps. And uh, in the case of one, she broke her arm. And in the case of the other two, miraculously, despite having actually gone head over heels in one instance, head over heels, not once, but three times on the way down these steps. Uh, it's almost like something out of a stunt TV show, and uh, no fractures, no head injuries. So let that be a lesson to us all particularly when we get past a certain age. Well, and there's the rector's daughter. She was sledding the other day and uh, decided to aim the sled at like a, like the wall of a snow fort. Now, you know, we've had, we've had very, very heavy, wet snow here on the ground. And, and basically what she was aiming at was an ice wall. Well, that's, just like, that's almost like running into a concrete wall. And as the rector said, she hit that thing like a Datsun going into a cement wall. <laughs> like, no, he said, like a used Datsun slide, you know, running right into a cement wall was the phrase he used. I thought that was pretty good. Well, she too went head over heels. People seem to be, you know, being catapulted through the air. I, I don't like that. But they're, they're apparently landing relatively okay. At least they're not landing on their head. That's good. Uh, you have, uh, you know, so she sprained her ankle. Okay, well, now, Guys, I'm here to tell you right now, a sprained ankle generally hurts a lot more than an ankle fracture. But it's, it's very easy to tell the difference. You know, with a sprained ankle, they're going, Ah, that hurts. With an ankle fracture, they're going, Oh, that hurts. But, but the ankle's hanging usually at an odd angle. And, if it's a bad ankle fracture, there's usually a piece of bone sticking out. Nonetheless, they, they took this last to the ER. There to, I'm sure, use the very comprehensive medical insurance provided by the church. To the tune of upwards of about $15,000 plus a year. Well, you get what you pay for, don't you? So, uh, she was hobbling around on her crutches. Her crutches! Well, now, I'm, I'll tell you, I'll admit, there's times I've sprained my ankle, I've used a pair of crutches from time to time. But, generally, I, I limp, limped along. Hurt. Man up. You're allowed to piss and moan a bit. A bit. <laughs> well, so it's that time of year, and as it gets colder again, I imagine we'll be seeing more of that stuff, so. Actually, uh, what I was talking about, uh, you know, people hitting their heads. This reminds me of a time when I was a first year surgery resident. You know, and, you know, the services would take admitting rotations from the emergency room. And <clears throat> occasionally I was, you know, well, not occasionally, every third night I was the guy on call for my particular service. And, uh, you know, 
when someone comes in the ER and they want a surgical consult, they just call all the, all the residents who are available, you know. Now, the, the older guys, the, older, the more senior residents had learned how to sort of avoid this. So this left me the first year residents go down and see these these admissions. Well, okay, that's fine. I mean, you know, most of the time it's you know, most of the time it's something you can handle or you can easily say, oh, this needs to, this guy needs to come in, this guy needs to go home. You know. But uh, there was a there was a hospital in Portsmouth, Ohio. I don't know if it's still open or not. And there was a guy down there that, well, we'll call him Doctor, Doctor from the East. And uh, you know, we had to carry these, these, these horrible bleepers, you know. And and you'd get this, you'd get this thing that would go. Beep, beep, beep. And then you'd pick it up and it was like 4301, 4301. And generally about two seconds after that, you'd hear over the intercom, Dr. Kersey, Dr. Joe Kersey. And you'd pick it up and it was of course it was the ER 4301's the ER you know. and uh, then uh, generally they, they would patch you through to doctor from the east down in Portsmouth and he would say hello this is doctor from the east I have head trauma on its way and, you know, this was every Friday and Saturday night. I mean, every Friday and Saturday night, you'd get one or two head traumas up from Portsmouth. You know, they'd stick these people in an ambulance. This was before the era of helicopters, you know. They'd stick these people in an ambulance and they'd drive up from Portsmouth, Ohio, to Columbus, Ohio. Sometimes these people would be intubated. You have somebody bagging them, you know. Sometimes they thought they were intubated and they were bagging them, but more of that anon. And uh, I, I, I actually finally, I, you know, I, finally about after about eight months of this, you know, I, I said to the guy, I said, what do you guys do down there in Portsmouth on a Friday and Saturday night? Do you, you know, do you get drunk and then just lay with, with just your head, with just your head in the highway? Because <clears throat> these were all, these were all in car wrecks. You know. There wasn't any, most of them didn't have a single associated injury. They just, they just had these closed head injuries. I said, you've got to be, these people have to be lying on the edge of the road with their head in the highway to have this kind of stuff. Because there's nothing else wrong with them. And they just giggled. Oh, you know that laugh that sometimes you get from doctors from the East. <laughs> which basically means fuck you okay but, but that's it was an interesting conundrum I, I never did solve that <laughs> so anyway these guys you know the squads brought them up you know sometimes private ambulances brought them up but the squads joined brought them up and, uh, and these are all generally volunteer squads they've been more or less adequately trained, and uh, and of course, you know, God bless them. Most of the time, they do a more than reasonable job. And uh, but this one time, this guy comes in and he's huffing and puffing and carrying on, and he's got a bag and mask over this patient's face. <clears throat> And he's ventilating this patient with a bag and mask, and that's perfectly acceptable. If you, know, if you can't get a tube in, you know, bag and mask. Now, I mean, you know, to, his, to this man's credit, this man who was very, very obese, was sweating profusely, looked, 
looked actually like he ought to be seen before the patient he brought in. Just from his general appearance and, and wheezing and carrying on, you know. Stop! I, I've been begging her all the way up. Here she is. He says, we couldn't get a tube in, so I bagged it. I, I bagged the master all the way up. I said, go. And then I looked at the patient, she was dead. I mean, she was flat out dead. And the reason she was dead was this woman had a tracheostomy in place. She, she had a tube that he could have attached his ambu bag to and ventilated her that way all the way out. But instead, he was begging, masking her, you know, and all the air he came in was popped right out the trach hole. So she wasn't ventilated at all. So basically, you know, very, very, I mean, I imagine very, very shortly after she left the emergency room down in Portsmouth, if not before, this one was already dead. Now, she was a lot warmer there in Portsmouth than she was when the time she got up here. Since, since that's, uh, that's about a two hour drive two-hour run, even when you're doing lights and siren, you know. So you cool down a bit. Not a lot, but you cool down a bit. <laughs> well, I think that concludes the stories for today. Paul's at work. He, he went back to work today after his week off. And then he apparently gets uh, Christmas Day and then the 26th and the 27th off. So he'll work today, uh, he'll work tomorrow, he'll work tomorrow and Tuesday. You know, 23rd and 24th and then he'll have the next three days off. So, so there it is. I'm, uh, Oh, I'm sure I'll be talking to you before Christmas, if not on Christmas. All righty. Bye-bye, YouTubers. I'm going to show you my flooded basement here in a moment. Here's my flooded basement, YouTubers. Here, I'll, I'll let you go down there. It's going to get a little darker, I imagine, since the... Well, let's back out here a bit. I'm, I'm just not going to go going down the steps. But see, you got a piece of that, that, that styrofoam there. And it's, it's actually the water's down off the bottom of that piece of styrofoam now. So the water actually is going down. So I doubt I'll have to even bother to pump this thing out here tomorrow. You know, sometimes it sometimes it goes down uh, quickly, and other times it lingers. So if it gets much more, if it gets above two inches, then I'll pump it out. It it because then it'll linger. But uh, all right, that's uh, now obviously next week after after it does go down I'll I'll be running the fans and dehumidifier and I'll I might even run the big heater down there to try to dry the place out a bit. But uh, we've had this happen before, you know. I'm not going to detail it for you. It's you know I'm sure everybody I'm sure everybody has had this kind of a problem. This is all part of life's rich tapestry. All right, now I'm well and truly done. Bye bye now.